Hey, I'm Al Emmerich with another installment of Creator Campfire Chats. So we're here today at Uptown Market for our next segment on North Main Street, Great Place to Eat. We thought this was, was appropriate because the topic for today is diversity. Who you have at the table on your team and in your brain trust to help you create your project. So have you ever been at that, that uh, dinner or that luncheon or, or that breakfast where everybody is just sitting there and nobody's really, really offering anything of interest and ideas? It's, maybe it's a business meeting you went to or maybe it's a family get together. Everybody seems to look the same, sound the same, and it's the same old rehashed conversation. Well, those are the kind of conversations you never want to have if you're an innovator, if you're creating a new project, you want to get all ideas on the table and kind of have a smorgasbord of perspective and ideas and, and, and a buffet of different thoughts so that it's refreshing, engaging, and, uh, and enjoyable. When looking at your brain trust, ask the question, will they challenge my ideas? Or are they just going to sit there and say, yes, yes, yes? How about, do they all think and look alike? You know what I'm talking about. I've been in meetings before where literally it's all a bunch of guys, men, that look just like me. And if we're trying to create a unique perspective, we need some folks with different color, different background, different heritage, different experiences to go ahead and give that different perspective. Also, do I have that cultural diversity? When I say cultural diversity, we live in a global economy. We live in, in a world economy. Literally, your product could be accessible potentially by the entire world. Who from other cultures, literally and figuratively, is at your dining room table to go ahead and come up with those diverse perspectives? The fourth note here, what type of SMEs do I have? SMEs, subject matter experts. If you're creating a, a, a coffee cup and, and everybody that's helping you on this project is experts at making coffee or coffee cups or, or in the restaurant business, that's great, but do you have a subject matter expert on marketing, on sales, on, um, on design, or, or how about accounting and operations? Those are all important things to make sure you have the right experts at the table. And lastly, where are my wild cards? Now this is the, one of the most enjoyable parts of this process. How about bringing in folks who have just absolutely nothing to do with your idea, just some stranger? Put them at the dining room table and get them to give you their feedback and their idea and their energy. Sometimes you'll find that some of the biggest and best ideas come from that wild card who plays their hand. Look, let's be honest. It's a lot easier to surround yourself with people who support fully your ideas to the point of, I love your idea. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that's awesome. You're right all the time. You look good. You know, it, it strokes our ego. And even the most unselfish of people still want to feel acceptance. But in the playground of innovation, as you're creating your project, that can be project death. So as we've talked about, this diversity is so, so important. But it's real easy, even if you start to add some diversity, to kind of go back to your old ways. Thus, it's important to incorporate, I'll call it a, a diversity strategy, into your innovation in creating your project. Any great strategy is a series of connecting the dots. You move from one step to the next step to the next step. Sometimes they move in tandem. So all of these points can be done, not necessarily in this order, but these are some suggestions that I would encourage you to engage in as you develop your diversity strategy. Uh, first of all, engage the end user. This is the person that is gonna either buy your product, invest in your idea, or, or hire you for your services. Next, look outside your circle. We've already stressed the importance of the wild card and the different players. When I say look outside your circle, it's not just outside your circle of your immediate team, but outside your circle completely, maybe even out of the community, even out of the country. When we think diversity, we of course automatically go to race or, or culture, but a lot of times we forget about age. You want to look at all three of those factors when you're engaging different perspectives. Even if your market is to a younger audience, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and engage folks who are of an older generation, whether it's from a mentorship standpoint or even um, a buying standpoint. Everybody brings their own experiences to the table and their own perspectives. 
and engaging these folks of different ages, different cultures, and different races will give you a more complete picture so you can go ahead and move on to potential success. I love this next one. Talk to creative people. Creative people come in all shapes and sizes. They don't have to just be artists. Creative people can be people who, who sing, who, who dance, who are the accountant next door. People who are creative in their ideas, not always in the application. I, I work with some very incredibly talented but also creative people in, in the business world who are not in the creative world. They're, they're in the finance department. I work with an attorney who's extremely creative and I'm constantly amazed by what she brings to the table because of her unique perspective in a creative way. So seek out those folks as well. That can be a definite help for you. Make time for honest discussion. If you're going to go through the process of building in diversity into your strategy, don't shortchange it. Make sure the conversations have adequate time for you to have an open dialogue, give and take, and also nobody feels rushed because when people are rushed, you're not going to go ahead and get the full scope of their perspective. I'm a big believer in journaling, so I always recommend that you write down perspectives. When you're having an exchange with somebody and you're actively listening, you want to pay attention and you're engaged and sometimes you can forget to jot down notes and you know if you're like me you can't remember anything so you forget what somebody said or, or a really salient point so as soon as you're done with that conversation jot it down or have somebody taking notes or you take notes during that conversation that way when you go back a week ten days six months ten years from now and you're, and you're building the next evolution of your great project you've got those perspectives still fresh in your mind and when you talk about perspectives, one of the most challenging is to put yourself in the mind of your competitor. This is a great tool through any part of the value chain of what you're creating in your project. Look at your project through your competitor's eyes and question it. Get that perspective. What would my competitor say if there was a competitor or if there are competitors? How would they challenge what I'm doing? Could they come up with a better idea? Getting that perspective from a competitor's standpoint kind of changes the rules a little bit and might just open up some, uh, some different items on this buffet of diversity. Look, let's face it. Everybody at some level or another is, is seeking approval. But if you're going to be that next great creator that comes out of one spark with a brilliant idea, the last thing you need while you're developing this project is a bunch of yes people. You need that challenge. This is a time for honesty. This is a time for perspective. And it's a time for diverse perspectives. So put a diverse group of folks at your table. And who knows? You might be the next great spark that comes out of one spark. We'll talk to you in the next Creator Campfire Chat.